Hello friends, this is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, and I wanted to present part two of our coverage on what's coming next, or what's just around the corner for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Now, there is a lot that of people out there that are like, how can you make this speculation? Where is your information? Where is your, your theory? Where is your mind at when you're saying these things? Now, I don't want to get into where my mind's at because that's a dangerous place to go. And I'm not sure that we as a community could come back from it. But where do I get this information? First and foremost, misdirection, guys. We've talked about misdirection a lot. Anyone who's been around the game long enough that knows that that's kind of one of one of uh, the way that CG, Capital Games, EA, they like to do things. They they present one bit of information. They present one character, and then in the next month, they present something else. Based off of everything that we've seen in the past, we know that's like their MO. That's what they do. And, you know, it's I think it's fine. Now, for those of you who don't know, the reason they do that is because often these characters are are good in different areas of the game because there's a bunch of different player types. I personally am a collector. I just like to collect everything. I like to level stuff up. I like having a nice long roster that is completely geared out or tried to be completely geared out. That's the part that I enjoy. Arena's fun. I love other areas of the game, but people like different aspects. Grand Arena right now is one of those places that everyone really likes. It's overall got a lot of great stuff in it, which makes sense. But not everyone likes Grand Arena. Some people still like the raids. Some people still like territory battles or territory wars. And some people just like the community. And so they play the game for the community. That being said, there are characters that are introduced to essentially hit those different player types. That's why the misdirection. That's why they say, here's one thing, here's something else. Now, we have seen a ton of speculation about HK-47, about uh, Darth Revan. And I said Darth Revan in the last video. I meant Jedi Knight Revan. We saw Jedi Knight Revan after Chewbacca, right? Because then we had Chewbacca, then Jedi Knight Revan. That was a crazy misdirection. But it does make me believe that there is more coming. And something big. First and foremost, guys, they introduced the Sith Raid February of last year. How do I know that? I went out to California February of last year to see the Sith Raid. And it was cool. It was really awesome. Loved it. And, you know, CG, if you're listening, I'm free. You know, I could come out whenever you want. Like, if you want to talk about a Hondo kit... I'm here for you. If you guys want to be involved in some kind of weird collaboration where we kind of have a country style rap battle about a Hondo kit that also works, just saying. But what I'm saying though is outside of Galactic Arena or Grand Arena, we we that's been the last major event. And so I don't necessarily know if a new event is coming. I don't I don't rightly know. Other proof yesterday. There is a, a a YouTuber from England. Some of you, some or I say England from the UK. Some of you may know him. Some of you might be totally new to this guy. Really great film, really great maker, um, Mick Mole. Now maybe he's not actually from England. I don't rightly know. I feel like he is, but I could be wrong. Mick Mole gave us this little shot here, and this was interesting. This was something that we saw in uh, a little bit of research. This is something that we were able to see in a few different places. Now, what you're looking at here is a picture of this thing that McMull had. And it is a, a Gamorrean guard in the leadership position, HK-47. One of them's showing uh, Sidious Sith uh, Trooper and... Uh, Emo Bastila. The other one is essentially Gamorrean Guard Sith Trooper, Nihilus, and, and what's this? Here's the thing, guys. A lot of you are going to say, oh, we're, we're getting a rework of something Sith-related, and it's, it's clearly going to be Darth Revan. I don't think so. 
I think this is a clue that's hiding in plain sight. We are finally getting the Gamorrean Guard rework that we've always wanted. What does this also mean? Probably Jabba the Hutt is coming. We know that back in the day they did say that more original trilogy stuff is coming. Jabba the Hutt. I mean, let's face it, guys. It's Jabba. And if you look at the Gamorrean Guard's kit, the Gam Guard, right? Damage over time. He's got three abilities, but he's also got three Zetas right here. Now, if, if this is the Gamorrean Guard, and I think that it's likely going to be the Gamorrean Guard rework, again, that we've all been wanting for. I think one of two things is possible. One, we are going to be getting our first double Zetable ability. What does that mean? That means punch through or muscle in or something is going to be able to have two Zetas on it. A Zeta 1 and then a Zeta 2, making it the most powerful ability in the game. Or, number two, second, we have our first triple Zeta ability in the game. I know it doesn't make sense to jump from one Zeta to three Zetas on one ability, but that's how powerful this ability is. And that's how powerful this, I mean, that's how much the community wants a Gamorrean Guard rework. They're willing to put three Zetas on one tune, on one character. I'm excited for this, guys, because the possibilities here are endless. We we could be getting our Mythic Rancor. We could be getting our first ever Sarlacc Pit raid. That would be awesome. Essentially, you have to survive in the belly of a Sarlacc, you know, that's or fight your way out. You know, that's kind of how Boba Fett did. And, you know, you'd get a crazy awesome bonus for having Boba Fett, whatever. Now, on the off chance that the Gamorrean Guard here is just a placeholder. It does look like it might be Sith related. It does have three Zetas, which does indicate usually a very powerful character. Uh, I don't know anyone in the game who has more than two Zetas who's crap. I mean, people here are like, oh, well, I don't care for the new Revan. Well, just because you don't care for him doesn't mean he's not great. Because he is. He's a solid character. The Jedi Knight Revan is a solid tune. If you like him or not, that's a totally different story. But he's good. That's the key. Could this be a Sith-related character? Now, we do have a Zeta on HK-47. Now, if we look over here at Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes .gg or SWGOH .gg, I always like to say the name out because I feel odd not doing it. But if you look at that, okay, here, all of his abilities are omega None of them are Zetable. I'm thinking it's possible. It's very, very possible that we could, we could be finally getting the HK-47 rework. We've all wanted. If that's the case, guys, then I am very excited. I am very stoked because I think Grievous as a droid leader is great. His kit is set up in a way that he, he allows, he helps droids and is going to be great against just droids and or, uh, pretty much every team that's not him, right? He's going to be a solid attacking character. Here's the thing, though. I don't necessarily know if he's going to be the best droid leader. If we get an HK-47 rework, and that rework needs to be great, it just does. I, I, I really think that HK-47... Is, is on the cusp of greatness. He's going to, with, with everything that we've seen so far, he's going to have some kind of uh, target lock ability and something that allows that target lock to, I don't know, just to, to, to thrive. Now, Grievous is more geared towards dark side droids. Now, even though HK-47 is a dark side droid, maybe a rework for him would be slightly different. Maybe a rework for HK-47 would be beneficial to all droids, not light or dark, just all droids. 
If that's the case, expect to see IG-88, expect to see IG-86 being better, right? I, I'm really excited about this, guys. I'm really stoked. This is what I think is actually around the corner. I do think that it's possible that we could be getting something else, but I think that a lot of this is just smoke and mirrors. Now, if this is for an HK-47 rework, if this is for an ancient legendary hero's journey or an ancient legendary character, whatever, then it's likely that the next month will be focused in and around that, which means once the, the other KOTOR tunes, Juhani and Karthonasi, go live, be prepared for those characters to be part of the farming guide. So if you're not farming OG or Darth Bastila or whatever you want to call her, Emo Bastila, Hot Topic Bastila, and Candorous Ordo, you should be. If I don't think that necessarily a Darth Revan would be needing a Jedi Knight Revan. I don't think that would be the case. Basically, if you look at the event, the, the Jedi Knight Revan event, you were given a Jedi Knight Revan, and then you had to use the other characters. So with that in mind, once those other free-to-play characters, or once those two characters, Juhani and Kandor, sort of go free-to-play, hit the ground running, guys. Save up your crystals. Get as high as you possibly can. Cash in your birthday money. Cash in your sell your blood, sell your plasma, sell whatever you need. If you are on the cusp of being a free-to-play player going to pay-to-play, this might be the thing that you want to invest in. Now, I've been focusing on Bastila and Candorous. I've got Candorous to six stars. Just brought him in. I mean, I'm in that, that final stretch from the zero to 100. Bastila, same thing, I think. I have my HK already worked out. But Juhani and, and Karth are going to be the linchpin, which means that if they're the ones that I'm going to be missing, it's possible that I'm only going to be able to get this character, whatever he comes, whatever comes next, to five star, I doubt seven star, because again, I'm really trying not to spend money this year. So far, I've been really great. So far, it's a month in, I'm showing my accountability. I have spent zero dollars. It has been really hard because I want to spend money, but I can't. That being said, guys, what do you think? Do you think that it is something related to KOTOR? Do you think maybe they're going to shift the month back to the end of the month, and it's like, hey, are they going to shift the KOTOR month back a month, and it's March not instead of February? Do you think this makes sense? Does at least my logic, as I put it forth, make sense? Leave a comment in the section below. Like, subscribe, share. I'm going to link this video with all of my thoughts on my website later on today. I do want to say, guys, that I, I, I just have to, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out. There's a lot of stuff that's in the game that can be data mined. And before I go, I've got to give a plug to my friends over at the Escape Pod cast. I'm going to have them on the show later on this week. And we're going to be talking about droids and, and the reworks and the new tunes and everything after we get a chance to play it a little bit. Now, later on today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this video, I'm going to put in the next video, and I'm going to take all of my thoughts, I'm going to write a blog post about it, and I'm going to post it on my site so you can watch the video, or you can watch this video, and you can check out the rest of my thoughts. If, but check us out there at goingnerdy.com. Visit us at, at Instagram, on, on Twitter, where I post a lot more of my random musings. Check us out on Discord. Join the conversation. I love this conversation. I'm hoping that some changes to my Discord are about to take place. I've got a, a few key elements that need to, need to be brought in. That being said, guys, let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, share. Join us wherever we can be found. This has been Thaddeus from Going Nerdy. As always, my friends, smile. Stay nerdy.